Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. This is going to be a comprehensive review on the GPT Pocket 2 running various forms of Linux. Currently we're on the Fedora Build 28. You can see right there. Go ahead and back out again. Now one of the things that Fedora 28 comes with is Wayland by default. Uh, and as a result, there are some problems with that. And I had to fall back to... I had to fall back to using X11. So you can see right here, uh, this part needs to be commented out right here. Wayland enable equal false. It is uh, commented, so just uncomment that and then you'll fall back to. Uh, where am I? Let me quit. Then you'll fall back to using X11, which allows you to do some screen notations. Otherwise, in Wayland, uh, it kind of just wanted a stick in portrait and wouldn't, even using uh, X render, um, it wouldn't change anything. I couldn't I couldn't force it in any which way, so I had to fall back to X11. Right now I do have uh, Vulkan drivers installed via the message drivers. I have Steam installed as well. Uh, I've compiled Dolphin on here and everything's working reasonably well. Rocket League uh, doesn't run super super well. Let's see we're updating this. I could go ahead and just run it real quick just so you can kind of see open gel performance is pretty poor right now. Hopefully when I go over and try uh, Ubuntu we can see if that works a little bit better. Uh, one thing that I do want to touch on is I do have this external hub which is USB-C and it branches out to HDMI as well as additional USB ports and SD card. Uh, it also has USB-C for power in. Now the thing, let me go ahead and close this chat. One thing worth noting is that while this was working, this is my mouse, uh, my, my wireless mouse. While that was working, transferring that through, I have not been able to get HDMI out to work proper on Fedora 28, whether in Wayland or in X11. Um, nothing's doing it, it doesn't, doesn't see it, doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna operate, doesn't wanna function. So right now, at least at Fedora 28, I can't get external output working. Actually, one thing that we should test as well is standby. So go ahead and do that. So there is some, I want to say, kind of like not super nice things about it. It kind of is a little bit sleepy with coming back, waking up. And sometimes I'm forced to just like press this button once or twice to kind of just snap it up. Let's see if it, let's see if it operates. Okay, that just fully went to sleep. And we're back up. So sleep works. It's just not very nice. Uh, give me a second while I enter my password. All right, so we're back in here. Let me go ahead and start up Rocket League just so you can see what that looks like. I've already gone ahead and lowered the resolution to 720p, and I've turned a lot of things down. All right, and we're in here. Let me go ahead and accept this. You can already see that performance is actually a little bit kind of gross and just so you can see what settings I'm running at here we go to video you can see we're running 720p and everything else is at high performance mode or a lot of things turned off if I go to play local uh, exhibition let's do 4v4 and rookie bots are fine go ahead and create a match and see how well this turns out Go ahead and jump ahead to this. <laughs> How am I gonna score there? <laughs> that's that's bizarre. But you can, I mean, more or less, you can see that this is uh, this is pretty poor performance, especially for the image quality that we're getting out of this. All right, very quickly, I'll go open up a terminal six uh, session again. We'll go to Bluetooth um, CTL. And the one thing that is good about this is it kind of shows that I've tried comparing. This is the newer Xbox One controllers that can also go connect via Bluetooth and one of the things that happens is you can see that it says it's connected but it has this problem of connecting and disconnecting there's a lot of different things that I've tried with uh, the blues stack trying downgrading that installing different packages doing different things um, 
it could just be the Intel uh, Bluetooth adapter that is with this version of Fedora that is causing this issue, but I haven't had much success. I've tried trusting the controller. I've tried, um, there's this one value that you can um, set it to yes, basically to fix this issue, which has been, uh, some people have had success with and I haven't. So that's one thing worth noting as well that uh, Bluetooth is kind of hit or miss. Uh, with, with regard to connecting controllers, I don't really have any other type of thing to uh, connect to. Let me go ahead and cancel this before I exit that. Exit this. So let's go ahead and just take a look at YouTube and see how well that plays. We can take a look at not Verizon. YouTube.com. Kind of loads pretty fast and well. We'll just go ahead and yeah, I don't want to play a music video and get slammed with some type of copyright ID. How to make ramen. We're always seeing people on their worst. This day. plays fine. Our job is to make it better. That's my excitement. Playback is super nice. While we're here, we can take a look at the hotkey buttons. That works. Volume down, volume up, brightness. Works. Go brightness up. Oh, I accidentally. I tapped over here. So the touch screen's working as well. You can see right here, touch down here. Go and escape that. Let's go ahead and exit this. One of the nice things about Fedora is when you touch into a text bar and it detects that you're touching in there. It's making a liar of me right now. Previously I've had it open up a virtual keyboard. Let's go here and perhaps if I touch here, there it goes. So you can kind of also touch down here if you wanted to. Which is nice, but I mean you have a full keyboard for that so you really shouldn't be worrying about that. Uh, additionally, because the fan is a hard switch, that will turn off regardless of whatever operating system you're on. It is hard OS independent. It is hardware. It's a hardware feature toggle. And that's it for Fedora, really. I mean, there are things that work. There are some things that are not really that great. Um, the battery works. Battery, charge, battery charging works. Wi-Fi works. Um, how much the battery discharge where we can see right here, and charging works well, battery reports work well. For the most part, if you were just going to use this as a single laptop instance in, in Linux, it's not terrible, but if you wanted to start using adapters, I wouldn't really recommend Fedora to use it. I'm gonna go ahead and install Ubuntu and we'll see how well that works and we'll do a little bit more testing on that side. All right, just jumping straight into testing Ubuntu. We'll catch up right where we left off where Fedora was. We'll see that performance is pretty much similar to Fedora. Doesn't really run that that perfect. Does have some hitches every now and again. So this is more than, more than enough to see how this is running. Let me go ahead and get out of this. Alrighty, so as you can see, we are in Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Go out of here. Let's go ahead and jump into Firefox real quick, and we'll just go ahead and see how YouTube plays. Everything pretty much plays just as fine, and it's kind of a mixed bag. So um, the, the one thing is that uh, Fedora seems to be a little bit more stable overall. There we go. So that's it. Runs very, very well. Uh, there is no real performance hitch there. It runs as well as you would expect it to work on any type of laptop. Uh, all of the keys do work here. So if we mute the keys or volume down, let's go ahead and volume up. All that works. Brightness controls work. Brightness is working. You can see the LCD getting dimmer. And we can go ahead and raise it. And once again, if we go ahead and just take a look at the fan, 
that turns it off. And again, that fan is agnostic. It's just a hardware switch. So for the most part, almost all the stuff works just fine in Ubuntu. And indeed, I even have this working very well. This is like a little cheap USB-C dock, but it does work. And I do have it working on here. And you can see a little demo of it, of it working just fine. And that's mostly what the story of Linux on the GPD Pocket 2 is. It's kind of a little bit of a mixed bag. And I'm sure you can get some type of, or as long as um, time goes on and the community puts in effort. But uh, on the onset from the looking at it from at launch you're not going to have the perfect linux ex linux experience with the gpd pocket 2. uh even on ubuntu i'm also having bluetooth controller issues with getting this controller to work same exact issue with fedora it's still using that blue z stack uh when i jump in it is using a lower version um the one in fedora is uh, an advanced version and this one is slightly behind doesn't matter i still get the same exact behavior where it connects and disconnects we can go ahead and run a speed test just so you can see how Wi-Fi performance is. Now, where I am and where I always record is a little bit of a distance away from where my access point is. So it's not really representative of the top amount, top speeds that you can get on here. But I am quite a distance away, and it is uh, comparable to what I get on other devices where I am currently. Go ahead and just see the upload. So that's that, just Wi-Fi works fine. That's basically the story of it, is that most everything just works fine. Um, on um, Ubuntu, it's a little bit less stable. So we should have jumped into standby there, and we can just take a look at this, and we should see this blink, and it does. And now it comes back up because I opened it up. So that's working. Now, one of the thing is that once the system enters into a long-term standby, a deeper sleep, uh, it doesn't actually recover fine at all. I need to forcefully shut down the machine. What has happened is I, um, when I do manage to actually wake it up, I'm in a completely different user environment. It's like a gray background. Uh, I can't do anything. I still have to forcefully shut down. It's really weird. Um, so while this does work on Ubuntu, I am having more uh, stability problems on Ubuntu. I would still recommend people using Fedora, the latest version of Fedora, if they want to have some semblance of a working type of laptop, because it does recover from standby. Even if it is a little bit finicky, it will eventually still recover. So that is basically uh, Ubuntu in a, in a nutshell. Things work okay. Bluetooth is kind of hit or miss. I, I don't have any audio Bluetooth to connect to, but just the controllers themselves, they're not working out of the out of the box. So um, I'm kind of done fiddling with that for now. So that's pretty much it to talk about Linux for right now. Obviously, this is a prototype, so don't expect all 100% of the conditions that I am facing right now to be exactly one-to-one -one for what the retail unit should look like. There are sometimes, uh, oftentimes, even with the GPD Win 2, when I had did my Linux tests, that they weren't one-for-one for retail units, uh, like the controller or even the touchscreen. My touchscreen versus everyone else's touchscreen was completely different. So um, while that is you know, the case, for the most part, everything should just work. This touchscreen is working, and I don't have—I didn't have to change any of the orientation. It just—it is working correctly as it's supposed to be. Uh, Fedora operates the same way. As long as you do the screen orientation and remove Wayland, um, and switch back to X11. So that's it. I mean, everything works fine. The sound is working. Uh, all the hotkeys work, the battery functions. The, it correctly reports the battery time on the device itself. You can see that. And it does that both on Fedora, the latest version of Fedora, and the latest version of Ubuntu. Uh, there are some rough edges. Um, Bluetooth, uh, standby, and uh, extra, uh, exporting USB-C to DisplayPort and uh, HDMI or any type of display out via USB-C is a little bit finicky. It works fine on, on Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Uh, doesn't work all that great on Fedora. And that's it. So it seems to be a little bit of a mixed bag, not perfect conditions for Linux just yet. Hopefully that has helped people get a better understanding of the condition of Linux on the GPD Pocket 2 currently. I expect things to be better as time goes on. Um, that's it for right now. Thank you so much for watching.